we have several things that we'd like to discuss um, briefly before we start. Um, I, I'd like to ask Tony to come up. He's going to um, help me thank a few people, and uh, we'll start with that. Um, if you didn't get a chance to get a program, um, they're on the back table where the flowers are. Um, I encourage you to do that because it's got, um, besides the names of our cast and everybody that's involved in the program, it's also got artwork uh, by our students uh, who all submitted um, drawings and paintings for our design of our flyer. Um, and those are on the back of the program. On the front, uh, which is the one you see up here, uh, Narumi, and I, many apologies, Narumi, I misspelled your last name and I'm so sorry. Um, but it was pointed out to me that I did and I guess I gotta work on my Japanese. But um, anyway, Narumi did the drawing that we feature on the front of our program and it is a beautiful drawing. It won first place in our art contest. And so um, I just hope you get a chance to look at the program so you can see the talented um, art students that we have here at GCA. Um, so Tony's gonna come up um, to help me thank a few people. Um, since this is our last drama program of this school year, uh, we want to make sure we um, talk about a few people that really were involved heavily in all of the things that we did, especially tonight. Hey guys, um, I just want to give a special thanks to the people that, you know, make this possible. You know, we kind of go out throughout the year, in the beginning of the year, kind of thinking, oh, we have to go to Vespers, and now we have to go to church. And we don't really thank the people that spend all their time planning this, especially Miss Scott especially all the drama people, especially all the praise people, especially all the people working back there to make this work. We don't thank them enough. And also a special thing is that um, we want to give a special thanks to um, Andrew Boyd for making this whole thing possible. Who had <laughs> He sacrificed all his free time to make this movie possible. And I, for one, saw how, he, how much hair he pulled out whenever we forgot our lines, which is a lot. And um, just we want to thank you for being here. And just a special thing. It's kind of easy to see, like, all our friends on there. Like, oh, Jeffrey looks good in that suit. Or, you know, someone's rocking that. And we just want to say, don't try to look at us. You know, look at us, but don't try to look at us as your friends. Try to look at the actors that we're portraying. Try to look at who Esther is, who the king is, who the guards are. Try to look at it like that. And it's kind of easy to see, you know, your friends up there because, you know, they're up there. But if you could just pay special attention to our last one, it would be very grateful. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, so um, as Tony mentioned, um, part of tonight's program is a film. Um, we have filmed the story of Esther, um, and like he said, we um, spent two really long, torturous Sundays um, filming, and uh, Andrew, I know, had at least three all-nighters of editing, um, so it, it's, there's a lot of blood, sweat, and tears put into this um, program, and uh, we're going to be alternating between live music, live actors, and a film. And um, so just as you're watching this, like Tony said, remember who the characters are, not so much your friends that are up there. Um, because if you, if you get absorbed in, in um, Ashton's funny line or in Jeffrey's emotion, um, you'll miss the story. And that's really the best part of this. Um, I brought up one of my uh, favorite books, which is actually one that the play is based on. Um, it's the modern language version of Prophets and Kings um, by Ellen White. Um, and it's an amazing thing because a lot of us really love the story of Esther. Um, but in her book, this whole book that tells this history of Israel, she's got one chapter for Esther. And if you read this chapter of Esther you find out that it's not this story of a really courageous girl, which is how we usually tell the story. It's a story of a really amazing God who works through a girl that just happens to be in the right place at the right time. Yes, Esther did some brave things, took a lot of courage, but it was because of her faith and a God who supported her that she was able to do those amazing things. Um, and I just want to read you one line in here that she talks about. 
Um, so, and a little bit about the history of this. So the Israelites had been captured by the Babylonians, and then that kingdom was taken over by the um, Persians. Um, and so during the time that Esther was there, the Israelites had been given about three or four chances to leave the city, to leave the country, and go back to their hometown. And even though 50,000 approximately did that, hundreds of thousands of them still stayed. And the prophets kept telling them, this is a dangerous place to be. You don't want to be here. And God worked amazing things through Cyrus, through Nebuchadnezzar, to keep giving the Israelites this, these chances to get out of Susa, get out of Persia, get out of this pagan country and go back to their hometown. And so many of them ignored that chance. And so Esther's story come about, comes about during a really dangerous time for the Hebrew people, for God's people. And even after all of these chances that God kept giving people and that they kept ignoring, he still worked miracles through Esther to give them more chances to get out. And so that's this wonderful story that we're going to hopefully tell tonight. Um, I'd just like you to, um, um, I just want to read this one line that she's got, and then we're going to pray. He's, she's, as she says, um, the Lord foresaw the trouble-filled times that were to follow during the reign of Xerxes. And as in the days of Esther and Mordecai, he will give victory to his truth and his people. And so she weaves in the story of us today. You know, life sometimes gets crazy for us, uh, but we don't always think about what's in the future. And God is working every single day in your lives and I, I'm talking especially to you students. Every single day he's working to give you all of the opportunities you can to come to him. And so we're all, um, as you can see, wearing these labels. Some of you guys picked up a label as you came in. Um, our song that we finish with is called Come to the Table. And Justin does a beautiful version of that. Um, and in the song he talks about how God invited his group of disciples who were a complete group of misfits, like the exact people you would not think that you wanted to start a revolution with were the disciples. And throughout the Bible, God uses people like that to do amazing things, and he uses each of us to do that. And so we're wearing a label of something that he sings about in his song, and I hope you had a chance to stop by the table and pick up a name tag and write a label for yourself. But if you didn't, that's okay. At the end of the song, or at, in the middle of the song, um, Testify is going to come up, and we're going to take our labels, and we're going to put them on the cross, because that's where they belong. No matter who we are, and no matter what people think we are, no matter what we think of ourselves, God invites us to come to him, and he invites us to be used by him. And so that's what our prayer is tonight, is that you feel the call to be used by God. And it, whether you feel it or whether you not, don't, uh, whether you're wearing a name tag or whether you're not, if you feel that you want to join us up here for the final prayer um, and make a personal commitment, it doesn't have to be public um, if you don't want it to be, but we just invite you, if you like, to come up and join us during that last song as we come up and make a commitment to allow God to use us no matter who we are. Please bow your heads with me, and then we'll begin with our first song. Dear Jesus, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for the talents and efforts put into this program by all of our students and our staff that helped. Um, and thank you so much for being a God who uses imperfect, um, afraid, and uh, nervous people like us to do amazing things. Please continue to do that with us, even when we aren't always aware of you drawing us to you. And I ask, especially tonight, that you touch the lives of those here and the lives of those who are watching and listening um, so that we are reminded of how much you love us and how welcoming you are for us and that we can each come before you and sit at your table with you. In Jesus' name, amen.
rock this boat and I just might drown. Honesty seems to come with the price. There's a time to hold your tongue, time to keep your head down. There's a time, but it's not now. Sometimes you gotta go. Sometimes you gotta move when everybody else says you should say no way, no, not today. You gotta ask if you want an answer. Sometimes you gotta stand apart from the crowd. Long before your heart could run the risk, you were born for this. Born for this. I'm leaning on the ones before me. My father's father's dreams. I'm standing on the top of the shoulders, calling the one delivering me. There's a time to hold your tongue, time to keep your head down. There's a time, but it's not now. Sometimes you gotta go uninvited. Sometimes you gotta speak when you don't have the floor. Sometimes you gotta move when everybody else says you should stay. No way, no, not today. You gotta ask if you want an answer. Sometimes you gotta stand apart from the crowd. Long before your heart could run. Born for this, you were born for this. One step, one move, born to trust you, made to lay my life be. Okay, when it comes to the falsely accused, I'm a little upset, but there are worse. 
worst way to spend a Sunday afternoon. I mean, aside, this place is pretty messy. Oh, Cindy, why are you being so positive about this? Like, you know it's annoying, right? I mean, that's like saying vanilla ice cream is annoying because it's mild, or Disney World is annoying because it's been around for so long. What's, what's, what's the problem with being positive? Well, nothing except that it makes people who are negative at the moment feel worse. Well, maybe it's time to switch sides. I guess. This, this is so annoying. It's not even, why, why am I even here? It's not my fault, it's Jocelyn. Mm. Trust me, Preston, none of us are happy that you're here either. So why don't you make the best of this and go through a box? Fine. I can't. This, this is boring. I could be, I could be doing so much other stuff. Same. Oh, just get over and go through a box. You and the drama king here were late. And besides, the sooner we're done, the sooner we can leave. And I'm trying to get out of here, so let's work together, people. Um, what is the dumping container? Over there. Over okay. there. Curry! Okay, there's no way all of that is trash. It is. It's like, what, five, maybe three years old? It's useless. No one wants it. And it's garbage. I think it's older than that. I mean, look yeah. at this. Okay, Can maybe this. Yeah, it looks like it'll fall apart if you breathe on it. It looks like Hebrew. Uh, Jocelyn, do you need a hearing aid? Uh, something. We're all saying it's old, okay? It can't be Hebrew. I don't know. I mean, it looks like a different language. I mean, yeah, I think it is Hebrew. So my dad was telling me about this app where like if you take a photo of it, let's see, you can like translate it into a different language. Yeah, I think I have that app too. Okay, here it is. Okay. It's, it's. Oh, you guys are not going to believe this. I'm not going to believe it? What is it? What is it? What? We just found an ancient scroll. Can I not be curious? It's not ancient. Okay, and, and it looks like a story. It's called My Friend Esther. You mean like Esther from the Bible? This is, this, guy. you're falling into a trap. Oh, quiet. Sunny, just read the story. Okay. I will not be taken in. La, 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 la. Present! What did I do now? Can you just be quiet so we can hear the story? Fine, but it's bad enough that I have to be here working on a Sunday afternoon with you guys. Now I have to be listening to a Bible story. Only a Bible study that I've heard every other day of my life? Well, I don't think you've heard it this way. Okay, starts off, my name is Azara and I'm writing down a story that I hope someone will find someday because it tells of a remarkable person who saved my life and the lives of so many. But even more amazing is that my God, Yahweh, made it happen and I got to see it. This is the story of my friend, Esther. We grew up in Persia even though we were Hebrew. We were born there, you see, in exile, so it was home to us, although the elders of our community often reminded us that we were strangers in the land. But twice, the rulers of our captivity, Cyrus and then later Darius, urged us to return to Judah and rebuild our city, and yet the elders in our village and many other Hebrew settlements did not return. I suppose it was easier to stay in Persia since we had been there so long, but there were some, such as Esther's cousin Mordecai, who felt it was a call from God to come out of this pagan country. Mordecai worked for the king and never felt like he could leave, so perhaps it was that burden that caused him to believe that everyone else should be leaving. I don't really know, but I'll never forget the day we realized that Mordecai was right. Back then, we still called each other Hadassah and Shula, our Hebrew names. Hadassah, Hadassah! Shula, why are you so loud? I heard you three Hadassas ago, and so did every other bird in the woods. So sorry. It's just, it's, it's, it's what's happening, what Mordecai said, it's happening. What, what happened? Um, the king, he issued a decree, and now it's not safe enough to be in Persia anymore, just like Mordecai said. What does the decree say? Well, I don't remember all of it, but I remember that the ladies have to report to the palace. We're gonna be under the care of this guy named Haggai. He's in charge of the women. The one he likes the most is gonna become queen. As for a Persian girl, that's not a bad decree, but 
I don't know of any woman who want to be selected from a group of girls like an animal for the field. What happens to the girls who don't get chosen? They stay in the palace forever. They don't have any opportunity to choose a husband or live their own life. Just another female in the household of the king. Well, for us, Shula... I know, I know. It'd be a lot more difficult than you think. And keeping Yahweh's commandments and everything... Does Mordecai know? Yeah! Actually, he wants us to go home so he can give us some advice. Dear Mordecai, you know, I'm so thankful to have someone as wise and as knowledgeable as him just looking over me and acting like a father figure. It's hard for me because, you know, my parents died when I was so young. How much do you remember of your parents? More than you would think, actually. I remember my mother's face, and that's usually what they say goes away fastest when a child's mother dies. That all the features begin to blend together. I never wanted to forget a face, and I never wanted to forget my father singing either. Did he sing often? They both sang. I remember every weekend when we prepare for Shabbat, our house would be filled with music and laughter. It was my favorite time of the week. My dear girls, you walk slowly enough, you cause me to age. <laughs> Sorry, Cousin Mordecai, we're reminiscing. Well, that will become a very valuable thing for you to do, I fear. It will be harder and harder to keep those connections between your heritage and the Palace of Susa. Do you really think they'll take us? I mean, don't they only want Persian girls? You are Persian girls. You have lived here your whole life. People like me, that did not return to Judah, we are considered to have given up our heritage and adopted the ways of this land. But we don't want to be Persian girls. I'm sorry that my job has made it hard for me to move. I know that Yahweh wanted us to move back to Judah, but I felt strongly that us, you and I, we need to stay. Perhaps this decree has something to do that probably means my family should have left, right? Shula, I cannot tell you what Yahweh has planned for your father to do. Perhaps though, Shula, Yahweh has a plan for you specifically, and you just don't know it yet. Anyway, I have to go, but I need you to prepare. I have an errand to run for the king, and I will meet you at the house afterwards. The king will send his shoulders after you, not in a short amount of time. And there is much to do. I mean, do you really think that they're gonna want girls like us? Well, more specifically, girls like me. What do you mean, Shula? Well, the announcer said beautiful women. And I mean, you're beautiful and sort of Persian, but me, I have red hair. Shula, I remember one thing very clearly from my childhood. I don't share it often because I feel like if I do, it won't be mine anymore. But I want you to know this because you're like a sister to me. Well, I mean, I like hearing about your parents. I don't really hear much from my parents. They don't talk to me much. Unless it's about gossip, but nothing really important. Well, every night before bed, my parents would sit me down and they tell me that I was a little light. A light that shone brightly for Yahweh. And your name means fire. So you will brighten the darkness for some people and for Yahweh, whether it's in the palace or out to the gates of Susa. But you are one of Yahweh's children and he loves you. But we gotta go get ready. And so it was that when the soldiers came to take us to Susa. We chose the names Esther, which represents the light from a star, and Azara, which represents the light from a fire. We were frightened and very unsure of what was to come, but we were thankful to be together and grateful for the belief that a whole host of heaven was watching out for us. Look at all the angels watching you They're singing songs that we have never heard And their voices ring like bells over the mountains and Oh, if only we could hear their words God
quiet wisdom is an evening song and the angels must be breathless at your beauty like the world catches its breath before the dawn god is here little one god is Jesus bends to hear you breathe, and his tender hands are holding you tonight, and his heart is ravished when you run, when you look at him, and oh, the endless mercy in his eyes, God is just to make us read a Bible story? <clears throat> Chapel adjustment. Preston, really? Like, no. Seriously. Fine. I mean, I like the story too. A little more intrigue, a little more mystery, but it's pretty decent so far. Well, based on what I know about the story of Esther, I bet that's coming. Wait, you know stuff about Esther? Um, what's that supposed to mean? I mean, nothing. It's just you don't really seem like the kind of girl who's reading her Bible on her free time. What? Well, I mean, don't get all defensive. We all see your social media. Not, not that you're a bad person or anything. We all post things you probably shouldn't online, but I don't know. You just don't. Yeah. Uh, Sydney doesn't. Sydney doesn't what? Sydney doesn't post stuff. Preston, what are you talking about? You act like you know so much. I do. I know everything. See, you guys post so much on social media. You, you, post, you post what you eat for breakfast. You post what you eat for lunch. You post your favorite color. You post your favorite shirt. You post everything, and Sydney doesn't post anything. Don't you, don't you think that's kind of creepy, Preston? Not at all. I think it's cool that Sydney doesn't post stuff. That's not what she meant, genius. Yeah. Guys, let's just keep reading. Uh, just someone, just go. Yeah. Come on. You're so obnoxious. Thank you. We decided rather easily that we not only had to change our names to Persian names, but that to protect ourselves from the unknown, we needed to proceed with caution. Perhaps that meant we could not even divulge that we knew each other very well before we came. After all, we looked very different from each other. Perhaps if we were very careful, we could keep the gossiping and catty women of the king's harm from realizing just how different we really were. We didn't know it would be dangerous for us since we didn't worship the pagan gods or the king. We had also been hearing rumors of the mistreatment of Jews in certain areas of the empire. We just didn't know what we would encounter at the palace. The first thing we discovered was that most of the palace staff was very different than we expected. They were mostly kind and helpful and encouraging, which surprised us. We quickly saw that perhaps Yahweh had placed his angels within our very presence in many ways. There were many that we quickly grew to love because of their generous and welcoming natures. But we still did not allow ourselves to let our guard down because Mordecai had warned us that danger lurked in the most unexpected places and that one slip-up could be deadly. What you got on your face, Parmas? Go smoke an oatmeal with a hint of gardenia. How about you? I have coconut milk with lavender and avocado. Mm, too much moisture for my skin. 
But I do love the smell of lavender. I want gardenia. I'm gonna call Hey Guy. Hey Guy! Hey Guy! Hey Guy! Hey Guy! Rias, what are you shouting about? Do you want to wake up the whole household? It is resting time in the palace, you know that. I want gardenia! Have you two not realized that this is not just a big slumber party or a beauty party? We are held prisoners here. We're held captive. We are never going to get to love the person we want to love again, never have physical love on our own terms, and if we want to bear and raise children, it will have to be what the king chooses and on his terms. Once this whole process is over, we will be stuck here forever, never living, never loving, never changing, until the day we die. You make it sound so awful, Mistress. It is awful. I don't know. I mean, it's pretty nice here. I wasn't kidnapped. I'm from here. Plus, I like the king. He's handsome, he's rich, and powerful. As far as I'm concerned, as long as Hey Guy keeps bringing the beauty treatments, I'll be here forever. But what if you're not chosen? Why wouldn't I be chosen? <laughs> because I'm gonna be chosen? <laughs> I didn't know you were so funny, Parmas. He would never choose a short queen. Um, excuse me? Short people are worshipped in some cultures. Yeah, yeah but and tall people are worshipped in every culture. Except for the obnoxious ones. Don't even start with me, Parmas. I haven't even gotten my gardenia yet. You two are so into yourselves. He's not going to pick either of you. He's going to pick either Esther or Azara. I can just feel it. What do you mean, Masters? Why would you pick one of us? We all look at but we're basically the same, right? There's something extra different about you and Azara. You are purposeful, thoughtful with what you do. You don't wander around here accidentally. You have meaning to your life. I mean, some of the other women around here, like on North Wing, we've all seen them. I'm so glad I don't have them up there. Wait, which side is North again? It's like this side and then that way. The king does not take well to absent-mindedness. You might want to work on that. <laughs> hey, hey, um, Carcass, you know where Hege is? I need some, you know, I need some gardenia. We're out. How can we be out? This is Susa, after all. There's none left. What do you mean there's none left? In the entire empire? That's what I said. What a rotten man. I think he's just too lazy to go get me some. I mean, why did he even come in here? You don't think there's anything about us that stands out, do you? I mean, I get the thought of the impression of thoughtfulness, but that's about it. We're, we're not even related. We don't look similar at all. I don't understand. I understand that, Azara, but there is something different about the two of you. It's not bad. It's just like you were raised the same or something. I can't really quite put my finger on it, but it's definitely different. Not bad. Ladies, we were passing by on a very important mission from the king when we overheard how luxurious it is in the royal castle. So naturally, we felt compelled to offer our services to our most fragile and lovely guests. Ew, does the king know you're here? My dear highness, the king sent us on a special mission. We're only stopping here out of the kindness of our hearts. We are but his humble servants, and we don't want him to thank us any more than he does for our selfless services. A selfless? That means no, he doesn't. You are here for one reason, and if the king knew anything about it, he would have your head. So I suggest you leave. Don't push it, Amestris. <laughs> the king already knows about your attitude. One word from Bigfin and I. After all, he had no trouble throwing out Vashti, did he? Not after our conference with him, Teresh. A mistress will soon learn the power we really have. Oh, yes, she will. And by the way, let's be glad the sun and stars don't fall after your example. We wouldn't want to lose these two, would we? <laughs> Those snakes make my skin crawl. I don't trust them, I don't believe them, and I don't like them. So true, they are scary. I wish they would just leave us alone so we could relax, and I could be the standout that I was born to be. Really, Gabrias? Look, Amestris, I know you think this place is like a prison or the end of our lives, 
But it doesn't have to be, at least for one of us. I mean, think about it, Vashti had the life. She was beloved by the king and the people. She was known throughout the empire for her beauty and her grace. No woman in Persia had as much influence as her. And look where it got her. Don't be a fool, Gabrias. Even the queen mother can be eliminated at the king's whim. Women have no standing in Persia. It's just a matter of time. Then why is the queen mother always telling us to stand out, to be different, to separate ourselves from the others? What else is she supposed to say? Be ordinary? She's just trying to help the king find a queen. I do think the king was sad to lose Vashti. Sad or not, it's just not the kind of love I aspire to have in my life. Or yours. <sighs> or yours. Hey guy, where have you been? I've been asking for Gardenia. Is there truly none left? My lady, this is Persia. We have everything. As soon as you're done with your royal training, I'll help Carcass bring you some. I will never talk to that man again. He told me there's none left. Carcass has always been the funny one. <laughs> not so funny to me. Save your irritation, Gobrias. Such spunk is not becoming of a queen. You should learn to carry it as permis- Thank you, your majesty. I am not worthy of such praise. You are, my dear. But come, let us not waste time. The king values punctuality above all else, and your session with Harbona is upon us. They are always entertaining, those two. Do you ladies have any needs you need me to fill? There are definitely not as many requests in this wing as the north. Thank you, hey guy, but we are well. It is always a pleasure. Why didn't you tell him about Big Thing and Teresh? I have learned to keep things unmentioned in this house. They usually sort themselves out, and bringing up things creates enemies, and I don't need any more of those in this house. You're right, Amestris. Azar and I, I mean, I, am trying not to be a standout in this house. You two have known each other a long time, haven't you? Sorry, Azara. It's okay, it's fine. She probably knew that anyways, and it's not a big deal. I mean, it's just like Esther said. We're not trying to stand out, and we're trying to blend in. I mean, we're trying not to be two girls from the same town, same life, same upbringing, same... same... faith? We are, but we didn't think it'd be wise to mention that here. There are those in the palace that aren't fond of us. But you're not one of those, are you? I'm not. I'm really just curious because I know nothing of your God. Curious mostly because the two of you. I have heard stories that are hard to believe, but amazing all at the same time. He is amazing. I believe that he brought us here for a reason. That hope that Azara and I feel keeps us from the despair that you feel. From the stories I've heard, he seems more like a father than a demanding ruler. My God, he asks for things and demands things, awful things. But you talk for love for your God, and I don't really understand that. You're exactly right. My God is like a father. When my actual father died, he filled that spot in my life, along with my cousin Mordecai. Mordecai, the guard that works at the gate? Yes, he took me in when my parents died. And Azara, your father surely gave you an example of that, right? No, he didn't. And every time when I think about my childhood, it makes me sad. But I'm grateful that I've had Yahweh, who's been my father, who's loved me. And it's been a journey, and I've learned so much from it. You're very perceptive, Mistress. I'm sure the king would appreciate that quality in you. Hmm. Well... He might have at one point, but I have no love for the king or the government, and I think I've made that very clear. Aren't you worried that your opinions might put you in a dangerous situation? Are either of you worried that if you're found out to be Jews that you'd be in danger? I mean, of course I worry, but I cannot be anything other than what I am. We understand that completely, Mistress.
when the time came, the king chose Esther because of her beauty. But we all knew that it was more than her physical beauty that he found attractive. It was the inner beauty she contained that drew everyone to her. She had some enemies to be sure. Darkness always hates the light. But outside of those, anyone who knew her loved her. Sounds like me. I am so loved. I thought you were tortured. Who said that? You know, I can't believe a mistress complains so much about living in a palace. I mean, check your privilege for a second. It doesn't sound that bad to me. I kind of agree with Gabrias. I mean, I don't know. I mean, imagine your entire future being decided for you and your family being ripped away from you. The only thing that got them through this must have been faith. Well, yeah, but I'm sure when Esther became queen, life got better for them. I mean, yeah, they probably got with their girl squad and like enjoyed the Kush spa life and everything. Yeah, sure, mister. I've heard this story every day of my life. You should know that that's surely not what happened. <sighs> I wonder how Zara tells it. Let me see, here. Mm, okay. Esther was given a dwelling of her own, farther away from the main palace building. At her request, those of us from the east wing joined her. Harbona became our personal attendant, and we often had Haggai coming with messages from the palace. Life was not as we would have chosen it, but for a time, it was not unpleasant, until the evil one began to stir up his puppets within the king's council. Oh. It was very late one night when Mordecai overheard a most chilling conversation. He normally would have been home because the king's gate was locked and barred and guarded by the watch, but he could not sleep and was walking the perimeter to calm his nerves. What about Haman? What about Haman? I mean, shouldn't we talk to him first about the plan? I mean, he is the one who wants to take the throne. He would want to hear about our plan to kill the king. This is not a plan for Haman, my friend. This is a plan for us. Besides, do you want that sniveling, selfish dictator on the throne? I think not. Think bigger. If we kill the king, we get the throne. But how could we possibly rule Persia? Haman would never allow that. You think so simply, but that's okay because I brought you for your strength, not your intellect. If Haman gets in the way, there's nothing that says we can't kill him. <laughs> And besides, if we take the throne, we can do anything. But what if we can't? We will not fail. And I have no intentions on dying. Come, I'll tell you what we must do. So, are you going to tell the king? Why is that? So he can execute those fools. You don't want them in the way of your rise to power? Let's just foul it up. Ah, they're good as dead. Haman, don't be so overconfident in this. The king has only just begun to promote you and honor you. Your power is still very limited. The king gave me this ring. It signifies I am Haman, the Agiite. And sooner or later, I'll be the king of the Persian Empire. Let's think about redecorating the kingdom. I would, except that he ruled Mordecai. I don't trust him or his god. <laughs> Mordecai would die along with his race. With all the crimes and evil. All in short notice. Haman did indeed go to the king, and through this unprincipled man, the evil one worked to oppose Yahweh. Misleading the king, he persuaded him to order a massacre of our people. There was a great mourning and wailing in every province of the empire when the new decree was read. But it was in those dark and awful moments that Mordecai seemed to have a better understanding of God's plans. Cousin Mordecai. What are you doing here? They never let anyone in the women's quarters. I got past the guards. I thought that Maybe you needed his counsel. Yes, thank you. I got Haytak's message. Do you think that we're gonna die? You, me, and Azara? Would the king allow that? Esther, Haman hates me. But this decree is 
beyond hatred. There's something evil in that man. I don't know what it is. But whatever that thing is, it's not going to stop until all of God's people are destroyed. Yahweh has given us so many opportunities to leave and go, but God's people have stayed. I don't think you get it, though. There's a reason why you're here. There's a reason why you're in the position you are right now. Because you are the chance. I need you to do what God has been asking you to do for so long. So, do not be silent. Because if you are, you and all the rest of these possibly die. I'm not ready for this. I can't do this by myself. I I'm not worthy enough for this. What are you talking about, Esther? I haven't been as faithful to Yahweh as I should be. After I moved to the palace, life got easy. It got comfortable. And now that I'm clean, I have so much to lose. Esther, you are still the light that shines for your God. You've always been that. We'll be here for you, Esther. We all will. I just, I don't know if I can do this. You can. But with Yahweh's help, anything is possible. Harbona, I need you to send a message to the Jews of Susa. What would you like me to say, my lady? Tell them to fast for three days. Tell them to fast and to pray. We will do the same here. And then when that time is up, I will go to the king, even though it's against the law. My lady, I cannot allow this. Thank you, Harbona, but there is no time. You must go. Esther tried to be brave as she said goodbye to Mordecai, but she most certainly believed that it would be the last time she saw him. She had no illusions about the risks she was taking. She told us herself that after they left, that she really did believe she wouldn't survive this. Knowing the king as well as she did, she was sure his advisors would not allow him to keep her after she broke the law so blatantly. Even with Big Than and Teresh gone, there were still so many who would never want women to have any kind of exceptions. So we prayed for three days. Even Harbona prayed with us. And still, even on the third day, she wavered. I'm not ready. I can't do this. I'm so afraid to die. And I have such a weak stomach. I've just been praying that my death will be easy and I have such a weak stomach. Maybe he'll just banish you like fast drive. Caprice, don't say that. You won't die, Esther. The king wouldn't do that to you. That's probably what fast drive thought. Have you no sense of security even after all of our fasting and praying? I don't know, I guess I've just been so caught up in how horrible my death could be that I haven't gotten a chance to listen to Yahweh. Maybe he speaks through us, Esther. I don't think he'll die either, but I do think that the king will extend you his scepter. And even if he doesn't, Yahweh will be with you. And so will we. Yeah. We don't have much time left. We need to pray and then I'll get ready. I think it was that prayer the one that came after she let go of her fear of death, that helped her to open her heart to the peace Yahweh had been waiting to give her. She came up from her knees with a sense of calm that the rest of us felt immediately. And as we prepared her, we knew she was ready. I just let go So beautiful Cause this is who I am I've been such a mess But now I can care less I could bleed to death
left to lie Give me another chance Lord, I'm ready now All the walls are down Time is running out And I want to make this count I ran away from you And I did what I wanted to But I don't want to let you down Lord, I'm ready She asked for a banquet with the king. At the time, I wondered if she panicked, afraid to ask the king for salvation in front of all of his advisors, all of her critics, the entire court. But I think it was wisdom inspired by a knowledge of the king, and most certainly inspired by Yahweh, that put that idea into her head. As we saw later, it was exactly the right plan. You know what I always say. Food is the best plan. You never say that. Preston, I why are you interrupting? Like, this is the best part. Yeah, this is like the best part of the story. Mm. But now that I think about it, Esther's plan was like genius. It's like when you're asking your parents for something super big. It has to be just the right moment or you'll get wrecked. Yeah. I totally understand where she's coming from. She must have been really smart. But it doesn't really seem like it was her idea. It seems like she was kind of a mess, and she had to make a conscious effort to let go. And when she did, God stepped in, and he took care of it. Honestly, the biggest battle we face is with ourselves. And those desires, I mean, they had to let go of them. They didn't even need them. Yeah. Girls and social media. You know, Preston, it's not just girls. You guys are always about trying to look cool. We are cool. OK, it's, uh, it's a human thing. I mean, we all do it, and Tony's right. It seems like every time Esther puts herself aside and lets God step in, amazing things happen, but when she puts herself back in it, like when she lets herself get scared, she kind of messes it up. Wait, wait, that, that reminds me of a story, what was it? Peter and the waves, like when he was like walking on water and he took his eyes off Jesus and he started falling. Look at you quoting Bible stories. I know, right? Pardon. Guys, let's just keep reading. How did that? Fine. Mm -hmm. So we were all shocked and almost angry when Esther told us that she never told the king what she wanted and had instead asked him to come again the next night. No one actually came out to say it, but we all figured she panicked. So we had a lovely banquet when the king came. All the ladies worked hard, and even Harbona and Haggai helped us. The room was beautiful, the food was fabulous, the atmosphere was just right, and the queen was gorgeous. It couldn't have been better. So we all were shocked and almost angry when Esther told us that she never told the king what she wanted and had, and had instead asked him to come again the next night. No one actually came out to say it but we all figured she panicked. We were exhausted, and the thought of going through the whole thing again? Well, let's just say everyone went to bed in bad moods. But looking back, I think it was Yahweh who made her feel as if the moment was just right. But looking back, I think it was Yahweh who made her feel as if the moment just wasn't right, because there was so much that needed to happen elsewhere in Susa that night. That arrogant, pompous, no good lowlife. I am Haman. What does he think I am? He is so poor, so arrogant. Oh my God. I am even more powerful than the king himself. I even eat with the king and queen. Just me and only me. So why are you so bothered by him? Because he does not honor me. He doesn't even bow to me. He doesn't follow the king's law and order to worship me. 
Damn it, really, you act like such a child sometimes. There's really a simple solution to your problem. So what should I do about it? All you have to do is get a pole, set it up in the backyard, and then in the morning, tell the king to have Mordecai hung on it. I mean, you are the most powerful man in all of Persia. It should be easy. And the banquet should be much more enjoyable tonight. That's an excellent idea. I'm glad I thought of it myself. I'll go ask him right now. I thought it would be better in the morning, but whatever. He takes credit for my ideas and then messes them up. Read that part again, the last part. Um, it was found that Big Fan and Teresh were conspiring to assassinate the king while Mordecai overheard, and the next day both of them were executed. And the next one? Um, the report on the Western province, but no further mention of the assassination attempt. What honor and recognition has Mordecai received for this? None, Your Majesty. Um, nothing, Your Majesty. Let me see that. How could I? Excuse me, I need to see the king. The king Who is out there? I beg your pardon, Your Majesty, but Heyman the Hegagai is here to see you. He's in the outer court waiting for you in the middle of the night. That's a little suspicious, right, Your Highness? Bring him in, bring him in. Heyman, perfect timing. Like always. Mm -hmm. My king. Tell me something. How should I treat a man that I want to honor? Well, you can give him one of your favorite robes that you've worn, of course, mm -hmm. and take your one of your best horses and let all these princes gather around and saying, this is what the king does for those who honor him. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, your Majesty, yes. that is a great idea. That, that is, is a good great idea. idea. That is a good idea. We should do that exactly for Mordecai. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? Do you need help, my friend, to keep your jaw off the floor? Hey. There, there, no, no, no. <laughs> All right. Haman was horrified by the king's request, but he obeyed, and all who knew him knew how he despised Mordecai. So it gave the city much to talk about and to laugh at. Haman took his humiliation home, looking for his wife to prop him up before his dinner with the king and queen. He spilled out a story in anger. My word, do I actually have to shout it out to the rooftops? I had to shout it out to every street, Zeresh. Do you realize how embarrassing that was? I don't. What are you doing? I'm packing. What are you nuts, woman? I'm here. Mordecai is a Jew, chosen by his god Yahweh. You cannot stand against him, Haman. Your downfall has already started. You will be ruined by this man. I am not going down with you. Oh, so you're stupid like the rest, huh? I am Haman. I will not be ruined. Tonight, I'll eat with the king and queen, and Harbona will be here very shortly. Trust me, I'll talk you out of this. Haman, you appear not to be ready. I am ready. Just because I'm sitting does not mean I'm ready. My lord. The king anxiously awaits the queen's dinner. He expects you to be there any minute. Yes. I am Haman! Yes. Yes, you are. Can you come? Yes, I can. You will fail, Haman. Shut your foolishness, woman. I am Haman! Does his hair impair him? <laughs> no, but perhaps if it did, he would be better off. We did not know at the time of the things happening outside our doors. We only knew that Esther was struggling with her fears again and that she needed to be reminded that she had behind her a God who could bring her through fire if he chose. She just needed a little bit of faith. Even the queen mother who had to come help set up for the banquet had something to say about Yahweh. I am just shocked at this mess. The king is gonna be here any minute. Your mess. Okay, Zether, be a deer and hand me that vase, please. Do I look like a common servant to you? Because I think you kind of mixed that up a bit. Zether, you are an abled body man with hands. Go be useful. You too, Carcass. Mm, I would, but like, my hands aren't working right now. So I kind of like, mm -hmm. I only got my shoulders. Sure. Ooh. 
Okay, but they're fine when food's around. As long as you will know. Oh my goodness. I have to bring the king to his residence very soon, ladies. Please make haste. Calm down. We're going as fast as we can, and you do not need to make us more anxious. Stall him if you have to, but he can wait just like every other man. You, you know, you want to talk about anxiety? You know, you can make him wait. I can't. I get to lose my head. Come on. He walks slowly enough. Maybe we can slow him down. Ladies, help me carry this to the other room. Listen to me, my child. I may not be a follower of Yahweh, but I remember the stories from my great father, King Cyrus, about how he talked about your God. I know that you are worried about what is to come, and the fact that you're not Persian just adds to that. But don't worry, it's not common knowledge. It's only in the way you face your problems, the way you talk, the way you act that I can notice. But do not worry about these things. I know how afraid you are of your peop for your people. I know how afraid you are for your cousin. But know that God will reward your faith, no matter what else happens. I love you, my child. May your God be with you. She always seemed wiser than everyone in the palace. She speaks truthfully, though. Esther, don't be so anxious. You will be safe as well as Mordecai. Esther, are you okay? They don't understand, Azar. I'm so afraid. Even if the king allowed Mordecai and I to live, how can I continue in this world knowing that I failed my people? How can I do this? I'm, I'm so afraid. I'm so afraid to die. There's this evil that surrounds Haman and I have this, this terrible creeping feeling and I can't do this. I failed, I'm a failure. Esther, listen, Yahweh will give you the strength. He has done it so many times before, remember? And he will do it again. Will he, Azara? Will he? Because I failed him so miserably. Look at me, I am a wreck. I should have asked the king when he offered me the scepter. I should have asked him last night. I've disappointed Yahweh so much. Why would he ever give me another chance? Esther, I'm not going to pretend like I have all the answers to your questions. And I can't even comprehend what you're going through. But just know I'm scared too. And throughout this whole ordeal, you have been there for me. You have lifted me up. You have reminded me that God loves me, that he will do everything to protect us. Now. You have forgotten that, and now it's my turn to remind you that he's not just a God that loves us and cares for us. He is a God that is powerful beyond comprehension. He's the same God that protected thousands of people from an army of Pharaoh and engulfed them in the Red Sea. It's the same God that protected Gideon, from, that guided him in an army to win against hundreds of thousands of Midianites. It's the same God that stuck and protected Elisha with an entire army of angels and struck blindness to his enemies. It's the same God that protected three Hebrews with the hottest fire that Babylonians could create. The hottest fire, and they came out completely safe. Not even the smell of smoke. If our God can do all of that, our God can protect you. Our God is a mighty God. And no matter what happens, he will be with you. And even if we die, even if we die, he is still worthy of our praise. They say sometimes you win some, sometimes you lose some. And right now, right now I'm losing back. 
I've stood on this stage night after night reminding the broken it'll be all right right now right now i just can't it's easy to sing when there's nothing to bring me down but what will i say when I'm held to the flame like I am right now. I know you're able and I know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand. Even if you don't, my hope is you alone. It only takes a little faith to move a mountain. Well, good thing, little faith is all I have right now. But God, when you choose to leave mountains unmovable, oh, give me the strength to be able to sing it is well with my soul i know you're able and i know you can save through the fire with your mighty hand but even if you don't my hope is you alone i know the sorrow and i know the hurt Oh, go away if you just say the word, even if you don't, my hope is you alone. I know you're able and I know you can, save through the fire with your mighty hand, but even if you don't, my hope is you alone. anyone ever will. But if you do, I hope and pray that you will hear at the very least this one thing. Yahweh never changes. He's the same as I write this as he was when I was young, as he was when he helped David become king, as he was when he took Moses out of the wilderness to lead our people, as he was when he called Abraham. And he is still the same in your time. Whatever time you live in, however long the story has been collecting dust, However close you are to the ending of time, Yahweh is still exactly the same as he has always been. He still wants to be part of your life. He still calls you. He still loves you. Don't ignore his invitation. It's the most important one you will ever receive. Wow. I mean, the only word I can think of is just, this is amazing. Do you guys really think it's real? Does it really matter? I mean, like, really? I mean, if it is, we'll be so rich. Preston, you don't even get it. Yeah, if we sell this, we're going to get rich. Big deal. How many people do you know that are rich and miserable? Um, Most of them. Those that aren't, they have a purpose in life. That's what this is. That's the value of what this is. I don't want to ignore God's invitation. We should really see this for the value that this is. You know what? You're right. We have to share this story. And I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry that I judged you, Tony. And Sydney, I'm sorry that I was so negative earlier. And Preston, uh, <laughs> Lord help. Let it out. And Preston, I'm sorry I was so mad at you for getting me in trouble. I mean, today's punishment has really turned into a blessing. It's changed my whole perspective. I mean, mine too. And Sydney, thanks for not letting me throw that whole box away. Yeah, I mean, if it weren't for you throwing out that box, I would never would have even discovered this. I mean, this is an amazing story. Yeah. So, obviously we need to take this and show this to Chaplain Justin, but before we do, would you guys do me a favor? Yeah. Yeah, cool. definitely. Would you pray with me? You know, it's really been a long time since I've said a prayer that's, you know, meaningful. And I thought it'd be good to, you know, do it with friends. I don't want to ignore God's invitation. I want to do what Azara said and find that same peace that Esther had.
the uh, praise band to sing that chorus one more time, if you guys would. They don't know I was going to do that. If anybody feels, and you don't have to have any pressure to do this, but if you feel like you want to um, join us up here for our final prayer, we invite you to come up. You can stick your name tag up there. If you don't have a name tag or if you don't want to do it, that's fine. We're going to close with prayer after they sing the chorus one more time. Just remember, each one of you guys, with all of your labels and whatever it is that you carry with you, you're invited to come and be used by God just like Esther was. One more time. Thanks, guys. To the table, come join the sinners who have been redeemed. Take your place beside the Savior. Sit down and be set free. Come to the table. Come to the table. Please bow your heads with us. Dear God, thank you for being such an amazing God. We are so privileged to, that you love us and that you even want to involve us in your great plan and in all the amazing things you do. We are so privileged to be a part of a group of young people that have so much potential and so much talent and so much ability and so privileged to know that you see and know each one of these young people and that you want to move and do amazing things in their lives. I ask especially for the ones in this room and each of the ones that come on this campus and uh, those that we know through extended means, please do something amazing in their lives and please continue to draw them to you so that they can change the world just like the group of disciples and misfits that you used long ago. Help us each to feel the pull and the calling and be drawn to you. And thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.